In the previous tutorial, we've put in all the different images that make up the navigation bar. And we've put them inside a div section labeled navbar. And we created a certain amount of rules to control that section. Let's take a look back at our diagram to see how, we, how we're doing so far. So we've entered in the wrapper div. We have also entered in the navbar. We've yet to put in all of these other div sections that we decided that we're going to put in. So we've got top left, top main, bottom left, and bottom name. Let's go ahead and put in each of those different div sections in the places where they appear here in this diagram. So if you notice that where the navbar is, that navbar is inside the wrapper. Top left, top main, bottom left, and bottom name will also be inside the wrapper. So I'll nip back into Dreamweaver here. And bringing up my code view, I'll put my cursor into the right place. Now just to point out here, all of this code here, that is the div section that is labeled with the ID navbar. So all those different images, they're all inside that. That's what that code is. So I'm coming outside that, but still inside the wrapper div. So I can see the start wrapper div tag is there. And the end wrapper div tag to end off the wrapper is here. So I'm going to put a, these new div sections, I'm going to put them in between the navigation bar and the end div tag of the wrapper. So I've put my cursor in the right place. And I'll go over to, into my insert panel, insert div tag, and the ID of this div tag is going to be top left. Click OK. There goes that content. There goes that div. I'll go down below that div. I'll insert another div tag. And I'll say the ID for this is going to be um, top main. Click OK. Go down below that div section in my code view and go insert div tag again. And I go to the ID bottom left. Click OK. There goes that div section. I can see them all popping up here one after the other inside my code view. And now I'm going to take my cursor, put it down below that bottom left, and I'll put in my last div section. So insert div tag. And the ID of that is going to be bottom main. And click OK. So there are my four different content sections, my four different content divs. I can see them in the design view. I can also see them over here in the code view. You'll notice after I put in each one of those different div sections that this, what I call dummy text, this text that reads content for ID top left, for example, goes here. It puts in that text inside each of the different div sections. The reason for this is, is because in a design view, if I didn't have any text inside the div sections, because they're pretty much invisible, it would be quite hard to spot them. And so Dreamweaver puts that in by, by default just so I can easily see what goes uh, where, uh, where the div is and where to put my content for that div section. Now, if I just focus first of all on design view, so I'm going to flick in just in here to into the design view of this website so far, I can see those different div sections. They've all gone in one underneath the other. There's the first one. There's my uh, top main. There's my bottom left and there's my bottom main they're all in strips one underneath each other now if I go back to my diagram I can see that's not exactly what I want I want top left to be over towards the left and to be a certain width and top main to be in beside it bottom left is going to go underneath top left and bottom main is going to go underneath top main going back into Dreamweaver I need to alter the way that these different div sections are at the moment by using different CSS rules and attaching those CSS rules to each of the different div sections as I see them there. I'm going to go back into my split view for a moment. 
And the reason for this is I want to get a better idea of what's happening to these different div sections. I want to start creating rules for each of them. And so the first one that I'm going to start with is top left. And I'm going to click my cursor right into the start tag of that div section with the ID of top left. That makes it very easy when I go over to create the rule in my CSS um, for that div section. So to create a new CSS rule, I'm going to go over to the CSS Styles panel, click on the new CSS rule icon, and because my cursor was placed into the start tag of that top left div section, it automatically brings in the appropriate selector. So I can see in the selector text box it's saying hash wrapper hash top left, meaning that any rules that I put into this that I attach to this uh, CSS selector that those rules will affect only div sections or elements that have been given an ID of top left that are inside uh, elements of an ID of wrapper. So that's fine. I'm going to click OK there to create that new rule. And the main two things I want to do is I want to change the dimensions of it, so the width and the height, and I also want to change the background, the background image. So first of all, let's deal with the dimensions. The dimensions of any element inside CSS and this CSS rule definition dialog box, they are always held inside this category box. So I'm going to click on box, and I see my width and my height there. Now what is the width and the height of this top left section? Well, if I draw your memory back to when I was slicing up the mock-up in Photoshop, I actually sliced these different sections as well. So I have an actual slice in the folder along with the rest of my sliced images that just has this image, this image from my mock-up uh, in there. So that image is the actual dimensions of that top left section. So the, easy, the easiest place to find out what the dimensions of that image uh, are is if I go into the Finder, the Finder application on my Mac and I just find my particular image of that section. I already have it selected here and I can see in the info on that image. So dimensions 173 in width, 306 by height. So I'm going to go back into Dreamweaver and put in those dimensions. 173 in width and 306 in height. I'm also going to put the float property on that element to left. So I'm going to click this down and click on left. Now, the reason that I want to change the background image on this section is really only a temporary thing. I want to put in the slice that I took from Photoshop that is showing me roughly what I will eventually have in my site. Uh, I want to show that straight away in this section. So temporarily, I'm going to go and put in that slice as the background image of this div section. And that will give me a, a, a good understanding and a good orientation as to what it will look like. But as I said, it's only a temporary measure. So I'm going to click on background. And uh, for background image, I'm going to click on the browse button. And I'm going to go to the folder that contains all my images for my slicing in Photoshop. And I'm going to move down until I find the one for that particular section, which is this one here. I can see it in the pen pick. So I'm going to select that image, click on Choose, and click OK. I don't have to worry about repeating or background attachment or background position X or Y because, luckily enough, this uh, this image, this slice, is going to fit perfectly inside the div section that I've set up for it. Click OK, and there it is. Now we can see the slice after going in there in the design view. It's looking a little bit, a little bit untidy so far because I've still got that dummy text content for ID XYZ goes here. That is in each of those different div sections and also the other div sections that are still up around that uh, area. So what I'm going to do each time I put in a background image for each one of these sections, I'm straight away going to go in here and take away the dummy text that Dreamweaver puts into that div section. When I enter it for the first time, I'm going to I'm going to delete that away. And so I should just be left with just the section.
with none of that dummy text clouding it or being above it. Now that I've done one section, I'm going to do something similar for all of the remaining three sections. So for top main is the one I'm going to try next. So again, I'm going to take my mouse, click into the uh, start div tag in the code view, and then I'm going to go over to my CSS styles panel, and I'm going to click on the new CSS rule icon. It's put in the appropriate selector, so hash wrapper, hash top main, that's fine. Click OK, and I'm going to create the rules for that section, starting with the width and the height. I'm going to go to the box category to do that. And the width, again, I'm going to go to my finder, and I am going to find the image for that section which is just the main content section. And that's it there. So the width is 521 and the height is 306. Back to Dreamweaver and put in those figures. So width of 521, height of 306, and I'm going to put the float property to left. Then I'm going to go to the background and I'm going to browse for the slice that I picked that I can put temporarily in there. And that's the slice there. Click on choose and click on OK. And there's the section gone in. I still have that dummy text over it though. Content for ID top main goes here. So I'm just either going to go in here to the code view or I can just as easily just take it here from the design view. It doesn't matter. Now in each of those different rules that I'm just after applying, first of all to top left and then to the section top main, I also included this float property to left. And the reason why I did what that was is so that these two different elements can go one beside the other. Uh, if I didn't set the float property to left, what would happen is it would leave them at their default uh, layout, which is in line with text, meaning that as soon as I put in an element, especially a div element, it would take over that whole line and it would force any other element that was beside it down onto the next line, which is obviously not what I want. At the moment, these two different elements, these two different sections, they're right beside each other and I don't see any space between them, but I'm going to fix that uh, once I deal with the other two sections that are left, bottom left and bottom main. So I'm going to continue on and do exactly the same process for these two sections. Click my mouse into the start tag of bottom left, go over and create a room. click OK. I'm going to go into the box category and I'm going to find out the width and the height of that section. So the width and the height of bottom main, that's the section there. Width of 173, height of 218. 173 by 218. Put the float property to left and change the background. Browse for it and just pick out that slice and put it in. There it is. Click on choose and OK. And I'm going to take away that dummy text there as well. Content for ID. Bottom left goes here. And then lastly, the bottom main. I'm going to click my mouse into that ID, bottom main. And uh, I'm going to create a rule for that div. Click OK. Go to the box. I need to put in a width and a height. Again, I'm going to go to my finder to find that. And there it is. So. 521 by 218. 521 by 218. Put the float property to left. And the background, I'm going to set it equal to that slice. Again, that dummy content is there, so content for ID bottom main goes here. I'm going to get in here. I'm just going to select it and delete it. And so I've got my four different div sections there and I've applied rules to each of them. Let me just click into design briefly and I can see that there's a lot right with the sections that I've put in so far but they're not exactly laid out in exactly the way that I want. What's happening there in the top line is that, that the three different sections, the top left, the top main and the bottom left, 
they can all fit in side by side to one another. But I'm going to play with margins in the next tutorial to fix that.